I am back from vacation after taking about a week off as my kids were out of school for spring break. We headed down into the Caribbean and enjoyed a cruise. So we had a lot of family time, but I'm good to be back. And we got a lot to cover in this outlook as we start to make that transition and out of El Nino into more of a La Nina, I think, by summer. So if we take a look at the latest outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, we can see this red shaded area. We've been predominantly in that El Nino type setup since June the 8th. But as we make the transition, we're starting to see those cooler waters down there into the Equatorial Pacific. All indications are we could be looking at another La Nina by the time we head into that June time frame. But all indications as we continue and that La Nina likely continues to strengthen, we could be even looking at a strong La Nina by the time we head into the middle to later part of the summer. We look at the latest updates and where these temperature anomalies are, we can see the rapid cooling down there in the Equatorial Pacific. You can definitely see the trend line is starting to favor southward, and that's that cooling off period down there in, in, into the Equatorial Pacific. Here's the latest update from the CFS V2 model. As of this morning, actually, and you can definitely see a noticeable trend as we head into those warmer anomalies out here in the Equatorial Pacific, we start to cool off and you start to see these deeper blues start to sh take shape, especially as we get deeper into the summer months. And we could potentially be in into a strong La Nina. In fact, even by the middle of summer to late summer. So if we look at the overall temperature anomalies and kind of where we stand, Right now, you can see these well above average temperatures, right? This is your Equatorial Pacific, but we also see some cooler anomalies start to enter the picture. That is that transition, folks. As we come out of El Nino and heading into La Nina, we, start, we are still gonna be looking at El Nino type impacts at least for the next couple of months. And that's crucial because we are going into severe weather season. And I think we're going to be looking at a more active time frame, well above average active time frame, especially over those next two months. And if you look at the last transition over the last seven days, definitely the trend is your friend, folks. Yeah, those cooler anomalies and especially those darker blues coming off the coastline of South America there. That is that transition, folks, as we start to rapidly going into that La Nina phase. So if we take a look at the phases and what we've predominantly been looking at over the last couple of months, really since about June, you can see these wetter than average anomalies, especially down there in California, and then increasing active subtropical jet stream. And then you have the polar jet that tended to be less active, right? So we had a well above average temperatures up there into the great lakes and much of much of the northern tier in fact we actually had some of the warmest winter on record for a lot of these areas and especially those areas around into the core belt we start to see those drier conditions but eventually over time and as we flip to that la nina I think the more active subtropical jet stream is gonna to start to phase out and these areas further south are gonna to start to dry out, especially into the summer months. And then further to the north, these areas are experiencing a drought. Those areas into Iowa and especially around the Corn Belt are starting to, are starting to, going to start to appear a lot wetter, right? And so uh, this is where we stand, right? We've been predominantly in what's called a split flow pattern. So where we get the northern branch of the jet stream tends to less, you know, doesn't buckle as much. It's more of a zonal type flow. That way there's not going to much colder temperatures coming down from the north and you have a less active type setup, but you have the southern branch really start to dip, right? You see the dip all the way down into southern Mexico. That way we had a very wet areas in California, but as it dipped, you kind of had a little bit of a dry slot down there in the southwest, but it came back out and this really set the stage for these active setups with the jet stream with these tier interiors into the southeast and up here into the east coast with this overall split flow type setup and that tend to look for a little bit less active and these 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 areas would phase a lot later 
But as we're transitioning, as the rapid deceleration of those cooler anomalies down the Equatorial Pacific, you tend to have a little bit more favorable and more traditional uh, ejections, trough ejections coming out off the West Coast. And that's exactly what we're going to see as we head into next week as a definitely more active favorable setup for severe weather as this jet stream does start to buckle and it's a pretty significant buckle almost takes on a little bit of a horseshoe type shape that could often lead to a very active severe weather setup for big time hell producers and unfortunately tornado producers all the way down into texas and all the way up into the ohio valley getting down into the dixie alley region and if you look at the supercell composite index for next week it's painting a red blob right there across texas through oklahoma and much of the southeast that is complements of that horseshoe type trough that will start to dip down as a more traditional type setup and i think this is going to be the trend as we head into april and especially may looks very active for severe weather before april this is where we traditionally look for tornadoes and active severe weather is across much of the southern and central plains and much of the dixie alley region and lifting upwards through portions of missouri and i think this is going to be a above average season for into april with that more traditional trough injection and those time frames will be transitioned out of el nino into la nina especially over the spring months those can often lead to those well above average very active time frames so we are experiencing or will be experiencing well above average you know severe weather front and i do feel that the the hell the hell situation and some that tornado above average tornado front will be prevalent for those april and may months but it's going to be very wet too so as we transition into april i do feel much of the south and the southeast will start to experience those well above average precipitation like they have been but also those areas further north are going to get some much needed help across the dakotas through minnesota through iowa those areas across the corn belt is going to be starting to see in some of those rains start to come back uh what they've typically not been seeing because they have been in a predominantly an extreme and in some cases an exceptional drought in some of these areas across iowa so i do feel as we make that transition these areas are going to be helped out big time across these regions and slowly by the time i think we head towards winter yeah i think a much of those areas won't even be in a drought anymore so it's going to take some time but i do feel with that flip in the overall setup i do feel those rains will be coming back in a big way but unfortunately it's going to have to come with some severe storms along with it and may is definitely especially in the 500 millibar and especially as more that traditional trough injection and more deeper into uh, out of that more of an enzo neutral type setup as we get into that may time frame i do feel may will be a very active severe weather month and especially on the tornado front as as uh as that buckling of the jet stream is a little bit more prevalent and as we start to phase a lot earlier on that's going to be setting up and as it moves across and these storms tend to be a little bit less progressive too and may is actually one of the wettest if not the wettest month for a lot of areas and it's going to look like every bit of it right so we see a lot of rainfall across a good part of the country for the month of may and i do feel that's going to be taking place if not more so i am expecting of may to be a very active month not only for severe weather but as far as even rain opportunities and precipitation as well as that yes definitely you know will be one of the wettest months that we see in 2024 so but as we make the transition we're starting to get, going to start to see these temperature anomalies you start to go up right so we're going to start to see continue those temperature anomalies above average across the great lakes and much of the northeast with predominantly ridging across this region but we are going to be starting to see ridging will start to build down there in mexico and down there in texas in the beginning stages 
will likely set the stage for a very hot summer across the south and as we transition and go into that La Nina, and I think all indications are with this overall 500 millibar as we go into that June time frame, we're going to be starting to see ridging really start to build across the south, especially down there in Mexico. And it'll take a little bit of a time, but eventually that will win as we get as we start heading into that La Nina type setup. I think some cooler anomalies are going to try to hang on for those areas across the Pacific Northwest and and much of Montana there. But overall, we're going to be starting to see that ridge start to come back and that severe weather front start to push a little bit further north as well as some of those ridge riders will start to kind of take shape as we head into june it's going to be a really prevalent as we head into july and here's the latest update from the cansips guidance for july and we look, we look to be in a predominantly la nina type setup by then so we should should start to see that massive ridge really start to build across the southwest about a good part of the southern plains and much of the southeast there as we start to see a lot of drying out across these areas as well but it also put the storm track well to the north as well so we'll likely see more of these ridge rider type setups that form on top of this ridging here and could be looking at even more derecho type opportunities as well across this region through Iowa and through portions of Illinois and through Ohio. So this looks to be a favorable area for storm tracks as we head into that July month and even in August, folks, right? So I am expecting a pretty hot summer, if not a very hot summer across the Southwest and much of the Southern Plains and getting into the Southeast is that predominantly ridging will start to teeter back and forth at times, but overall, this whole area should be overall drier than average and definitely warmer than average for much of the Deep South. And that'll place the ridge, you know, these storm tracks well to the north as well and that'll put that storm track well to the north across those areas across the northern tiers into the upper midwest and heading in through the corn belt through those august months so uh, guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching this was just kind of an overview of that making that transition out of el nino and to la nina and with a more active time frame i think that's going to appear heading into that spring month so i'll be fine-tuning this as we go forward and tomorrow with an update on what may it be to come for the rest of March. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update while I protect you before and after the storm.